All right, so maybe showing you guys how to use the motor drive for the Power Seeker 80 EQ, and what you need to do before you can actually use this motor drive is is you need to put a nine volt battery inside of there. Now it requires you to take off those screws right there on the back of the bracket as well as these two screws in the front. Now these two screws here they really don't do anything but other than to hold the bracket on this front cover that's all it does. So you actually have to loosen these up. This one here under the power button that's actually your adjustment knob for your speed. So if you wanted to track really fast, uh, you would adjust this to higher or lower speed. You have your Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere buttons. If you're here in the US, you want to use the button facing the N. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, like think like Africa, for example, um, you would use the S. And then you have your power on button and the off button. Um, so once you have your 9 volt battery in, the actual next part is is to set up your telescope so that it's uh, ready to use the motor drive. So as I said, this is the Power Seeker 80 EQ, and this is a motor drive that uh, sometimes you can get this with the Power Seeker 80 EQ, not always, but sometimes you can. Um, You'll want to set up your scope so that it's facing north and you'll want to make sure that your right ascension and your declination knobs are loose so that you can actually move your scope to position it north. Now my scope is not balanced so it's going to be a bit of a hassle here to do this but I was setting this up just for visual use but I figured I'd do this video on using the motor drive. So we're going to set our scope up and face it north and then what you're going to want to do is, is once you have it all set up you're going to want to lock down your declination and your right ascension knobs so that they don't move now your your knobs you got one here and you got one over here on the left and right so you have one on the left and one on the right you'll want to loosen those so that you can adjust the mount position so we're going to go ahead and lock this down, making sure that the mount is facing north, the telescope is facing north. Now the way I have my tripod legs is, is I have one tripod leg that's facing south, and I have two other tripod legs that are facing east and west. Now what I do is I have the counterweight between the east and west tripod legs, and the actual tube will be facing north, and the uh, counterweight will be between those two tripod legs now honestly I don't think it really matters which tripod leg you use the whole point here is to make sure that the tripod legs face east and west so whichever tripod you want to have facing south is up to you uh, so anyways uh, once you have that all set up you're going to want to take your motor drive and there is a uh, allen screw that is on this side right here. You have to loosen this up with an Allen wrench. Now I believe an Allen wrench comes with the motor drive. And what you're going to want to do is take this screw out. And then it's going to, the screw is going to slide into this bracket right here. And you're going to put it back into this spot right here. Now what you're going to want to do is, I don't know if you can see this gap up here at the top of this screw. But you're going to want to make sure that this screw right here is on it's inside of that hole right there on this silver bracket. It's really important that the screw is in that gap right there because what it's going to do is, is once you tighten it down it's going to allow this the silver bar to rotate so it can actually track and that's what you're going to want to do. Um, so all right so I am back now and I have this screw okay so that it's almost on that gap right there. So you guys can see that. So when I push this on, to so kind of put it on like that, it's really important that it goes between that gap so that when we tighten this screw down on it, it doesn't come off. And you'll know that's on there because when it, you can feel it wiggle in there that it's stuck between the side of it. 
and I think that is on there. Now the other part is, is that you have to screw down this screw right here, which is not really a screw, it's an Allen type, uh, I guess you could call it a screw. You want to tighten that down tight so that it doesn't wiggle around, the motor drive doesn't wiggle around. There's an on off switch at the top here, it's the, the on off is like a bluish color when it's off, the white one is when it's on. And then you got your north and south. As I said, if you're in America, you'll want to set the switch to the end, facing the end. And you'll want to adjust this speed knob right here. So I highly suggest that you start it out all the way down. Like that, so that it's off. And then you're going to want to switch the switch on. Now, before you do this, my advice is is to get something into the eyepiece, preferably the, uh, the moon or a planet. That way you can actually test this out and make sure that the motor drive is working. Now take in mind, right, that if you move this bracket, this motor drive around a lot, chances are uh, what's going to happen is, is it's probably going to get loose and it may not track. So you'll have to, I highly suggest that you re-put this on if you move your telescope around a lot. Set it up for the moon and then see if it tracks. Now, when it comes to actually using this telescope, you can have it facing south or east, I mean, or, or north. And is you can freely rotate the telescope. I have the declination of right ascension knobs locked, so it's not going to move. But you know, what I want to do is, is this telescope is currently pace, facing uh, north right now. And it's not going to want to stay still because the back end of it's too heavy. But what you can do is you can freely spin this tube around. We're not moving the tripod. We're just going to spin this around like this so that it's actually moving so that we're going to face south. And this telescope is way too heavy for the back end of it. So I'm going to have to actually hold this tube and... Now it is actually facing southwest now, and it is really heavy, so it's not able, it's not really balanced out. But anyways, so this is actually facing southwest now, and you can still track like this. And it's what it's going to do is, is it's going to arch across like this. So when it's tracking, if it's starting out from the east, right, and it goes across the sky. Actually, that star right there that you can see is Cyrus. Straight up there. I don't know if you guys can see that bright star, but that's Cyrus. And then Orion is someplace over in that area right there. In fact, I think you might be able to barely see that star right there. I think it's Beetle Gus. But anyways, what it's going to do is, is the actual motor is going to track it by going like this in, a, in an arch. That's how it's going to work. Now, take in mind, it's really important, okay, that you balance your scope, okay? Like I said, it's really important that your scope is balanced because if you don't have it balanced, you're going to put stress on that motor. So the way you can test if it's balanced is is by um, allowing the scope to, to freely move with the right ascension and declination knobs uh, in, disengaged. And when you push it over, if it stays... When you have it pushed over, like it's not balanced there, balanced there at all, you're going to want to adjust the actual tube either forward or backwards and until you are able to get it balanced. It's, it's a good idea to put your diagonal and your eyepiece that you're going to use on while you're balancing it out. And you're also going to want to somewhat tighten down the actual brackets here, like for this right here. <laughs> See that right there? That is not. That's not really smart having this knob not in there. Amateur move right there. Um, but anyways, hopefully I've been able to uh, share some information with a lot of you that don't know how to use the motor drive. Like I said, you can adjust the speeds on it so that you track. My advice though is, like I said, use the moon to track with it. And if you run into any problems with it not really tracking adjust the actual motor drive and make sure that the bracket and the screw are actually locking down onto that gap so that it will track 
chances are if you put it on wrong it's not going to track right but it does track once you have it all uh, set up right and like I said if you're tracking slow you will not even really notice that it's actually uh, tracking because it's going that slow the whole point is is if the uh, if the uh, thing that you're looking at is staying in the field of the eyepiece then you know that it's actually tracking and chances are if you actually use it on the moon you'll notice because the actual moon will stay in the field of the eyepiece so if you're looking at a crater on the moon chances are if your tracking is going well then that crater shouldn't move outside the field of the view of the eyepiece if it does then the tracking is not working but anyways that is it hopefully you guys were helped on using the motor drive for the power secret 80 eq and if you guys have any questions for me feel free to leave them in the comments below if i have to i'll try to do a follow-up video on using this if it's not of any help right now and that is basically it clear skies